It's the first week of the fantasy playoffs, and if you were lucky enough to have a bye, congratulations. But if you're playing this week, setting your running backs may not be a small task for you. Hopefully my top 30 running backs and then a few guys sitting on the outside looking in will be able to help you get ready for fantasy victory. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Even on Thursday morning, we do not have a ton of clarification on several running backs who are dealing with injuries this week. But hopefully your team is stacked enough that even if you're dealing with some of those guys, you're locked and ready to roll. But if you need help getting your lineup set, I'm here to help you work through that. My top 30 running back rankings are coming up now. And then at the end, I will have a few guys that I just couldn't put inside the top 30 this week, but we still need to talk about. Honestly, the top three backs this week, I don't think there's a whole lot to debate about them. Christian McCaffrey is always going to be the number one running back, and he gets a super easy matchup going up against Arizona this week. Kyron Williams going up against Washington. He gets more volume than almost any other running back in the NFL right now, and he's been highly successful this year. We're going to continue to put him up here right at the very top, especially if the Rams have positive game script against Washington. He could have a big day. Rashad White is playing like a man on a mission right now and he gets a Green Bay team that over the course of the last several weeks has been unable to stop the number one running back from any team that they have faced. He could have his third 100 yard game in the last four games against Green Bay. Jameer Gibbs is going to get a pretty good matchup going up against Denver. Even though Denver's defense has been better, they have given up the second most rushing yards over the last four weeks. Now the reason that I have Jameer Gibbs higher than David Montgomery this week is because his usage in the passing game could end up being more influential because Denver could keep it close with Detroit. Denver is playing a lot better right now, and if this is a game that Denver is able to stay out in front of Detroit of, then we're going to see a little bit more Jameer Gibbs this week trying to work out of the backfield in the passing game. Alvin Kamara gets a matchup against the 29th ranked run defense with the New York Giants this week. Alvin Kamara's upside hasn't been exactly what we would have liked as of recent but that's okay. He's either scoring touchdowns or getting enough passing work. Hopefully we do get him a few more targets this week. It could help put him inside this top five pretty easily. At number six, Bijan Robinson going up against Carolina, who have allowed the third most fantasy points to the running back position. The last couple of weeks, we have seen Bijan Robinson playing over 80% of the running back snaps. Yeah, Arthur Smith is still giving some touches to the other guys, but hey, Bijan Robinson scoring a goal line touchdown last week. That's all we've been asking for. David Montgomery at number seven. Same thing I said about Jameer Gibbs, but we're going to flip the script just a little bit because David Montgomery, if Detroit can get a lead and if Detroit can stay out in front and control the game with the run game, David Montgomery will end up having a better day than Jameer Gibbs. Fortunately enough, both of these guys working together, they both find themselves inside the top 12. Saquon Barkley at number eight will get a New Orleans defense that's on a little bit of a downward trend now ranked all the way down at 26 against the run. Definitely saw a huge game with him last week, scoring two touchdowns on the road at New Orleans. Run the ball with Saquon Barkley. Let Tommy DeVito do his thing, and hopefully the Giants can continue winning this game. Raheem Mostert at number nine is going to get the New York Jets 29th ranked run defense this week. Now, the reason I've got Raheem Mostert a little bit higher than Devon Chan this week is because even though both of them are questionable, and even though both of them miss practice on Wednesday, that is something that we've seen out of Raheem Mostert for a few weeks now. He hasn't been practicing nearly as much. They've been holding him out till the end of the week, and he has still been playing just fine. But with Devon Chan, with as much time as he's missed and with his how banged up he has been, missing practice isn't making things a whole lot better for him. And because he came out of last week banged up once again, it wouldn't be a surprise if the Miami Dolphins tried to just keep an eye on his workload going up against the New York Jets. The biggest fear here is that if Miami goes up by a ton on the Jets, that we don't know what happens with either of these guys. We've seen it be where if they have a big lead, it's a Chan instead of Mostert. But if a Chan's banged up and they want to limit his touches, they run Mostert out there. 
Just keep in mind that I think the highest upside this week sits with Mostert because I think he'll end up playing the most snaps towards the beginning of the game. Austin Eckler bounced back with a good week last week. Now he's going to be getting a Las Vegas run defense on Thursday night that he absolutely could take advantage of and have another good day, not only on the ground going up against their 25th ranked run defense, but through the air with a few targets, having a backup quarterback and no Keenan Allen. Honestly, Austin Eckler could end up going all the way up to number six for me this week, but I am playing a little bit cautious just in case they don't get them worked into the passing game the way that we would like. Tony Pollard will definitely have an opportunity going up against Buffalo, but how many touches is Rico Dowdle going to take from him? That's the main question right now. Tony Pollard has shown some nice games over the last few weeks here, but he hasn't shown the upside to go any further than a low-end RB1. On Monday Night Football, DeAndre Swift is going to be getting the 23rd ranked run defense of the Seattle Seahawks and a team that that is giving up the fifth most fantasy points to the running back position this year. Swift definitely hasn't played as well as we would have needed over the last couple of weeks. If you were still able to sneak into the fantasy playoffs though with him, you could have a big week to get your playoffs started and his upcoming matchups look just as juicy. Devon Chan really already broke that down when I talked about Raheem Mostert at number nine. A Chan, I just don't know exactly as of this time how healthy he's going to be this week. That's why he's on the outside of the top 12 looking in. Travis Etienne gets a tough game going up against Baltimore. Still could find the end zone this week, and that's what we're hoping for. Even if the total yards aren't there, hopefully he can score a touchdown. He's been doing enough in the passing game to still keep him right on the edge of RB1 territory. Brees Hall, we're going to need the same thing that we got from him last week, and that's going to be a lot of work in the passing game going up against Miami. If we can get that work in the passing game, he could have himself another nice week. I'm not willing to go inside the top 12 right now though because Miami's run defense is still really solid. Derrick Henry at number 16. Coming off a couple of touchdowns last week against Miami. Going up against Houston is going to be a tough matchup as well as Houston's defense has done a really solid job on the ground allowing the seventh fewest rushing yards this season. We're going to need to find the end zone because I really don't think we're going to see more than maybe 70 75 yards from Derrick Henry this week. Najee Harris at number 17 has a really good matchup going up against Indianapolis, but they're working with Mitchie Biscuits at the quarterback position, and with Jalen Warren still lurking behind him with the big playability, it limits Najee Harris's upside this week. Joe Mixon has seen a really nice run over the last few weeks, finishing inside the top 12 running backs, and that could continue against Minnesota this week if Joe Mixon gets the work in the passing game and if Joe Mixon can find himself in the end zone. If not, we're probably looking at a performance from Joe Mixon that puts him right down here. Minnesota's run defense has been good this season, and I could definitely see it keeping up this week and limiting the upside that we get. Plus, with Chase Brown looking good recently, maybe he is a guy that also steals a few touches, maybe gets a big play here or there, maybe steals a touchdown from Joe Mixon. But right now, the Minnesota defense is ranked fifth against the run and allows the six few as fantasy points to running backs. At number 19, Zach Moss. And I would like to put Zach Moss higher, especially for those of you that were relying on him to help finish off the season for you with no Jonathan Taylor. But Pittsburgh's run defense has steadily gotten better over the last several weeks, and Moss over the last two weeks has looked lost at times. I'm not sure if they're going to be relying on the run too much this week. He'll definitely have the volume, so he makes his way inside the top 20, but where will the upside come? Jalen Warren at number 20. Najee Harris probably gets more touches this week. Jalen Warren, however, has the best big playability out of both of them. So even if he has fewer touches, he could end up with more total yards. Zeke Elliott going up against Kansas City. Kind of like what I said last week with him. Even if he's missing some of the upside that we would like, he still is getting so much volume that it gives him a really safe floor. Now, going up against Kansas City, probably not going to see kind of the matchup that we saw last week where New England was leading the game and playing in a positive game script. Kansas City could put him down early, and if that happens, Zeke needs to make his mark in the passing game because the run game probably won't give him everything that we need. Devin Singletary at number 22 against Tennessee. Devin Singletary came back as the lead back last week after basically splitting touches two weeks ago. Moving him up here to number 22, going up against Tennessee, especially since we don't know if C.J. Stroud is going to play, could be reliant on the run game for Houston this week. 
Javante Williams at number 24 has a really tough matchup going up against Detroit. For as bad as Detroit's defense has been over the last couple of weeks, they still stop the run at an absolutely insane pace. Look for Javante Williams to get a decent amount of work on the ground, but not a whole lot of upside. And kind of the same thing with James Cook. He's coming off a really good matchup last week, put together a lot of points for us last week, but Dallas's defense is absolutely no joke, and they can stop the run and stop it well. James Cook is going to need to get some touches through the air, and if the Bills can get down inside the red zone, hopefully they can give James Cook a couple of touches there as well. Ty Chandler going up against Cincinnati on Saturday. As of right now, we still don't know a whole lot about Alexander Madison and whether or not he'll end up missing this week. If Alexander Madison doesn't play, honestly, Ty Chandler is still probably going to be right here for me. I am moving forward with my rankings, expecting my Alexander Madison to be out this week. If Madison were to play for some reason, however, Ty Chandler probably drops outside of the top 30 for me. Chuba Hubbard at number 26. Atlanta's run defense had a little bit of a crack last week against Rashad White. Chuba Hubbard's been getting a ton of volume as of recent. If he can find himself getting a couple of big runs, he can put together enough volume to find himself inside the top 30. James Conner is going to have a tough matchup against San Francisco. And because he doesn't get a whole lot of work in the passing game now, he's going to have to make it up on the ground. James Conner is going to be touchdown dependent this week. And it's the same thing against Kenneth Walker as well. Going up against Philadelphia, Walker at number 28. Not going to get a whole lot of run on the ground this week and still has Zach Charbonnet. This is a really tough matchup. Kenneth Walker is going to be touchdown dependent. The one thing that he has over James Conner, though, is he seems to be the guy that has looked at in the passing game a little bit more than Zach Charbonnet. A couple of receptions and a big play could do us a lot of good. Antonio Gibson is going to make his way up to number 29 because as of right now, Brian Robinson has yet to practice this week. And because of that, Gibson could be the lone back going up against the Rams. And at number 30, Keaton Mitchell's got a really tough matchup coming up with Jacksonville, who's inside the top five, fewest rushing yards allowed on the season. Keaton Mitchell's got some big playability, though. He's been playing a little bit more than Gus Edwards, but that pesky Justice Hill is still keeping him off the field more than we would like and more that allows us to put him higher in the rankings. Now, just on the outside looking in, I've got a few teammates here to start. Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. Right now, we don't know if Jerome Ford is going to play this week. He has a wrist injury and he was limited in practice, but Chicago's defense does a really good job of stopping the run right now. If Jerome Ford does play, he probably sneaks inside the top 30 based on potential passing volume. If he doesn't play, Kareem Hunt probably sits just outside the top 30 on his own because he would have to have a touchdown to make his day decent. A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones right here together. As of right now, Aaron Jones, we don't know if he's going to play. He's logged a limited practice so far, but Tampa Bay's run defense has been good this season. I don't know if I can trust Aaron Jones this week, but some of you may not have an opportunity to trust somebody else. If Aaron Jones were to miss again, though, A.J. Dillon will probably find himself barely inside the top 30. Last week, CEH played a majority of the snaps, and he got a majority of the touches, but Jarek McKinnon got Got that touchdown. Going up against New England, whose run defense is pretty good this year, CEH may not see the upside that we would like. Jarek McKinnon, once again, is probably touchdown dependent because they have not utilized him in the passing game really at all this season, even though CEH may outvolume him once again. All right, so Dante Foreman, I'm having trouble putting him inside the top 30 because even though he's the lead back, he's going up against a Cleveland defense that can absolutely shut the run down. And it's not that I'm particularly worried about Dante. Dante Foreman not being able to pick up some yards because he absolutely could. I'm more worried about the fact that can Justin Fields move the ball down the field against Cleveland and put them in a position to score? Because if they do, then Dante Foreman could be higher for me, but I don't see them finding their way into the red zone too often against Cleveland this week. Chase Brown going up against Minnesota is going to be a guy that is going to be reliant on a big play. He's probably going to get a little passing work this week, but he's going to have to snap off a couple of big ones to be able to find himself inside the top 30. Tajay Spears going up against Houston. If Houston can lead Tennessee, then Tajay Spears would find himself on the field a little bit more often. But Houston's going to be missing a lot of their starters, potentially. And Amir Abdullah, for those of you wondering, I would start him over Zamir White this week, going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. Zamir White, I think a lot of people are going to kind of float to because he'll get more work on the ground. But I'll take Amir Abdullah with a few dump-offs and a few targets to outperform 
from Zamir White. Well, Headliner Nation, there you have it, my top 30 running backs. And I can guarantee you there's going to be a little bit of movement in the rankings before kickoff on Saturday. And speaking of that, don't forget, Saturday, we will be live at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube because we've got three Saturday games that we need to do a live show before. So make sure you set your alarm clocks, set reminders, and be right here to join us for all of your start and sit questions. For right now, though, Headliner Nation, I'm going to get out of here. Peace out, stay safe, and stay healthy. And I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. I'm a headliner.